And watching them take their medicine was our reporter Damien Tiernan in an area that's provided the nucleus of the Limerick team. With three players on the starting 15, Gary Kirby, Kieran Carey and Barry Foley, supporters here in Patrickswell are feeling the pain of defeat more than most. The village, as you can see, is still nearly deserted, but fans have started coming home and the post-mortems have already begun. They hadn't been looking today. They had it up to, up to date. A lot of voids. Yeah, a lot of voids. Uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of pressure, I'd say. You're Barry Foley, Foley's sister. How do you think you played? Very well. I'm proud of you, Barry. <laughs> oh, they're all in the height of depression. <laughs> They'll never get over this. There was a big build-up. There was a huge build-up to it. But um, they'll just have to accept it now, and that's all they can do. OK, you win some and lose them. Now, we're, we're still very disappointed that uh, we lost uh, the year before last and lost this year. Is it, is it worse than two years ago? It is, yeah. They lost it again. And, you're going to lose and it won't happen again because they're gone now for a good few years. And it's a sad, sad story. <laughs> Well, a sad, sad story indeed. Well, earlier we saw the Limerick manager, Tom Ryan, pay gracious tribute to the Wexford team. And the Burlington Hotel are hosts to the Limerick men this evening, and that's where Jim Carney went in search of a reaction from the Limerick players. And welcome to the Burlington, where you can almost reach out and touch the trauma that all Limerick people are feeling here tonight after losing two All-Ireland finals in three years. But like the gentlemen they are, very sportingly, Joe Quaid and Stephen McDonough have joined us to talk about the match. Both of them were outstanding today, but in a losing cause. Joe Quaid, five to six hours after the game, how did it go wrong? Um, very hard to describe it at the moment. Uh, we are feeling devastated. You know, we don't really know where it went wrong and I suppose at the end of the day no one will really ever find out. Uh, we came up here with the best intentions to win the match. Things didn't happen for us on the day. So all we can do is try and get back, try and get back up here again. Joe, you were called on again today to make two more brilliant saves. There must have been a lot of pressure judging by the fact that you had to make those saves. I don't remember too much about them, Jim. Um, I think one was in the first half. I, couldn't really tell you who it was from. It said to go in the first half, I was kind of disappointed with it. I just got caught on the wrong foot. But um, it said to say, that's what I'm there for, that's my job. And every fella goes out in the day to do his job, whatever he's called on to do. Stephen McDonough, you played a great game at the back, but how did it look to you? What was happening up the field? Where it was going wrong? I suppose it's hard to say, really, Jim. You know, we. Um, I thought maybe we crowded a small bit up front, but you know, you can you can be critical at times like this, and I don't think that's fair. Like, you know, everybody's in it together, the team, the panel and the management, and at this time, like, it's, it's very difficult to say what the problem was. You know, I think I felt myself, you know, we weren't good enough, and we just didn't win it, that's it. 